night may be long and the dark may be deep, but the answers are there to be found. Whether it's the normal, the abnormal, or the paranormal, you're in the right place. Let's go Beyond Reality. Good evening, good morning. It's Beyond Reality Radio. I'm your host, J.V. Johnson. Jason is off tonight, but we've got a great show lined up for you. As we do, I say it every night, but I mean it every night. Um, yeah, we've got, we're going to be talking about afterlife communication tonight. Our guest will be Bill Phillips. He's a psychic medium and he's written a book called signs from the other side. He's going to be talking about how he helps people deal with the grief of losing loved ones and how anybody and everybody can communicate with those they have lost. It's going to be a great conversation. Um, we will bring him in in just a little while. We will take your phone calls. We're not doing readings tonight, but we will take your phone calls later in the program at 844 844- 687-7669 as Bill discusses ways that you too can reach out to and communicate with people that have departed. I always love this topic and it's always one that's filled with uh, sadness, but a great deal of um, um, consolation as well, I think, as you realize that uh, the people that you lose um, actually haven't been lost. There's always something uh, that you can grab onto, whether it's communication or not. Um, that will help ease the grief of losing somebody. Uh, so we'll be doing that in just a little bit. Uh, let's see. Looking ahead, tomorrow night is a best of program, as every Friday is. Monday's uh, schedule is going to be changed a little bit. Tuesday, we've got Raymond Shemansky on. Uh, Raymond is a uh, going to be talking about the truth regarding extraterrestrial visitation from the perspective of a former senior scientist for the government. And then on Wednesday, um, some other scheduling change is going to be made, but we will have Lee Austin on. He is a flat earth theorist, and he's got some uh, some new ideas and some new information that he wants to pretend or present. He will be uh, on part of the program on Wednesday night of next week, and then we have another guest that will join us for the second half or maybe the first half. So I'm not sure how Slick is handling that, but we do have... Um, We'll have a couple of guests that night, including Lee Austin. Uh, So a lot of great stuff coming up on the program. Um, Of course, we have a great weekend. I don't know if, uh, I'm not sure if it's been posted yet, but this weekend I'm involved in a fundraiser, which um, my sister and I actually started as a tribute to my father, who was a musician. He was also a fireman, but... He was a musician um, that taught everybody in his family and related families and neighbors how to play. He taught me how to play guitar. He was a bass player primarily. Um, I'm also a bass player primarily. He taught my sister how to play. He taught my son how to play. Uh, So those musical tentacles uh, reach deep. And we created a scholarship in his name when he passed away. Now, how many years? Five years ago now. And uh, that scholarship uh, raises money to uh, help kids who are going to college uh, to pursue a career, at least an education, in music, to help further their education in music. So um, if you get a a chance, swing by the Gary Johnson Memorial Scholarship Facebook page. I think there will be a link on there if you care to donate anything Uh, everything is appreciated i don't know if it's there yet but it will be there at some point most likely if not tonight tomorrow and uh, if you happen to be anywhere in upstate new york this event will be held saturday starting at 6 p.m at the b-side ballroom and supper club and it's a fancy name for a bar restaurant uh, in oneonta new york Six o'clock again, that starts on Saturday. There's going to be, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, like six bands. And those bands include um, three bands that I'm playing in and one band that our call screener, Orion, is playing in. In fact, he's kicking off the night with his band at six o'clock. So uh, it promises to be a great evening. This is, be, I think, the fifth one now. And every time it's packed and every time it's a blast. So if you uh, can join us, we'd love to have you there. If you'd like to donate, uh, like I said, there should be a donate link up on um, Facebook sometime tomorrow, if not tonight, at the Gary Johnson Memorial Scholarship page. So um, if, you've, if you're so inclined, please uh, please visit that page and do that. Oh, let's see here. A couple other things I want to mention. As long as we're talking about Facebook, swing by my Facebook page. It's JV Johnson on Facebook. And also, if you're not familiar with the YouTube page, I invite you to go there because that gives you an opportunity to see uh, past shows 
also watch the live stream, plus a bunch of other content that we put up on there. All you have to do is go to uh, YouTube and search for J.V. Johnson. Subscribe if you get there, and click the little bell icon if you want to be notified of new videos or live streams. It's as simple as all that. And the let's see, the Beyond Reality Radio website is a great place to check out the radio stations that we are airing on. The list is there. And you can also find the Beyond Reality Radio coffee mug. I'm just trying to make sure I've covered everything. I know there's some other things, but we can talk about that stuff a little later in the program. We'll go to break right now. And when we come back, we will bring in our guest again. We'll be talking with Bill Phillips tonight. He is a psychic medium. His website is BillPhillips.com. Now, Phillips is spelled with one L and two P's at the end. So it's BillPhillips.com. His book is called Signs from the Other Side. That's all ahead right here on Beyond Reality Radio. I'm J.V. Johnson. Hey, it's J.V. here. You know I've asked for your support in the past, and I'm going to do it again because it's really, really important. And there are a couple of ways you can support the show, and it's so inexpensive. Now, you can go to Patreon, and you can become a Patreon supporter, and we really, really encourage that. But there's also another way. If you look at the description of the podcast, if you're a podcast listener, and you scroll down to the bottom, there's a way to support the show directly through the podcast app. And it's only 99 cents a month. It's less than a buck. You probably have that change in your couch right now. That dollar a month, less than a dollar, goes a long way in helping us produce this program, provide great interviews for you during the course of the week. I thank you in advance because the support is so important to the program. Our guest uh, tonight, Bill Phillips, is a psychic medium. His website is BillPhillips.com. Phillips is spelled with one L, two P's at the end. BillPhillips.com. He's got a book out that's called Signs from the Other Side. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Bill, welcome to Beyond Reality Radio. It's a pleasure to have you here with me tonight. Thanks so much for having me. It's an honor. Now, I've tried to remember, have you been on the program before? I have not. Okay. I, 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 for some reason, I thought when I saw your picture, I said, I think he's been on before, but I wasn't quite sure. Um, well, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you on here now. Let's get to know you a little bit. Um, sure. First thing... I always like to talk to folks who uh, have such sensitivities and get a sense for when they started to recognize these abilities. When did that happen for you? You know, um, that's a great question. Um, I was a child. I remember being, you know, uh, four, five, six, and at, at night, uh, before going to bed, I would see, you know, faces around me and eyes around me, and it, it scared me. I, w- I really wasn't sure what to make of it. Um, at the time, my mother um, told me, you know, you watch too many Freddy Krueger movies, it's all in your imagination. <laughs> and uh, so there was a break, there was a period there where I, I, I actually wasn't as in tune with it as a child. Um, but what happened actually was uh, both my parents actually had um, issues with drug addiction, and so I kind of bounced back and forth between them. And when I was six years old, my mother actually kidnapped me and took me across the country from California to New York. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and so, you know, what I, what I really find is that um, people, um, anyone who is really drawn to this ability or who has this type of gift, uh, sensitivity, there's usually a form of trauma that I, that I find that occurs that really breaks open their awareness and uh, shows them that, that, that energy and what it feels like. So for me... It happened to be when I was a child and, you know, being uh, tossed across the country and, you know, not really knowing where home was going to be at um, and and experiencing trauma when I was there, um, I had no choice but to go within and to really um, have this sort of faith. And as a child, I I didn't really know what to label it. All I knew is that when I closed my eyes and when I went within, that I was being protected. And I, I I, I couldn't call it, you know... God or spirit at the time, all I knew is that there was something else going on there. Um, and so uh, I was in New York for about three years, and my mother suffered from her, from her addictions, and I was taken back from New York to go stay with my dad, who was living in Vegas at the time. Um, and uh, I, I basically went from one extreme to the other. It was basically the same exact scenario, just in a different state. Um, so, you know, there was more trauma there and I was actually kept from my mother for almost six years. And, um, to make a very long story short, she, um, she actually passed away within a week of a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer that was caused from her addictions. And I was able to take a red eye out from California to New York, uh, 
when I was 14, and I was able to say goodbye to her in the physical. Little did I know that two nights later she would come to me out of a deep sleep. And, and so, so really there's, uh, there's two versions of this. Yes, I definitely had the sensitivity when I was a child, but it really came back full force when I had that, um, that awakening and that sort of trauma of, of losing her physically. Um, and when, when she came to me, you know, she just wanted me to know that she was okay and that she was going to help me be okay. And, of course, as a 14, almost 15-year-old, I didn't know what to make of it. I was, I was happy to have that experience, but I was also nervous and scared, and I didn't know who I could tell, you know. So there were so many different type of emotions going through me. But that really was the catalyst for me to be able to um, delve deeper into this realm and to really understand more about what I was perceiving. You know, it's interesting you bring trauma into this discussion and talk about traumatic events being events that can trigger some of these sensitivities or at least create an awareness of them. Because often uh, we'll talk to people who have had near-death experiences, you know, maybe in a car accident and they they died for a couple minutes and were brought back. And experiences like that are very, very often uh, what they cite as the turning point in their lives when it comes to these sensitivities, and it's after that experience, which is obviously a very traumatic experience, that they recognize these sensitivities within themselves. Absolutely, and I can also vouch for that myself because a year after that experience, I was myself in a really bad car accident where the doctor said, you know, we don't know how you survived this. And I, I remember still there was a split second, just a split second, where I literally saw everything go before me. I, I had seen my life from start to finish. And, you know, it, it, it sounds kind of out there until you actually have that experience, you know, in that situation with the near-death experience. But I definitely can recall how vivid that was. And then when I came back, too, I was in my car and I, I was there. So, um you know, what I've come to realize is that absolutely this is how the universe works, this is how spirit works to get our attention and to kind of break us out of this, um, you know, what, this expectation of what life's supposed to look like, but really shows us why we're truly here, you know, and um, I firmly believe that we are all designed to be sensitive and to be able to use our higher self, our intuition, um, you know, that, that God light to connect with, to help us and to, to really um, be able to delve deep into our journey here. Um, and for every person, they will go through that experience at some point in their life. And it's, it's up to them, really, if they want to, you know, go further with it, be open to it, or maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's too much fear there. It really just depends on the situation. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to intelligently ask this question, but I'm going to try. Um, given how common it is for people to say these sensitivities became um, a part of their lives after something like a near-death experience, do you think it, that that traumatic experience or any traumatic experience does something to change us within our bodies? Or do you think that by uh, experiencing something like a near-death experience where your uh, soul or whatever it happens to be leaves your body for a short time and makes a connection to, to the other side, when it comes back, that connection just remains stronger than it would otherwise? That's a great question. I, I actually feel like there's a little bit of both going on. Um, I feel like when someone has that experience, they're actually given a reference between, you know, the two spheres of the brain, the rational mind and the, you know, the subconscious mind. And so when that type of um, situation occurs and, it, you know, if someone is launched out of their body and they come back, it's all part of that, and I, I feel like really um, understanding that, you know, that, that intuitive side, that, that soul side, our, our spirit, is definitely just attached to the physical body, but it's, it's not, you know, obviously when the body goes, it goes back to source. Um, so, you know, it's a, it, it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword with the question, but I, I feel like both things happen. There is a soul recognition that occurs, um, you know, when someone has that type of experience. But let's just say that they don't have the near-death experience, but they have, you know, they maybe um, lose a loved one traumatically. And something within themselves starts to 
question and starts to wander. And that something that's questioning and wandering is definitely uh, the intuitive part of their self and their, their soul self trying to come through and, and, and really show them that, you know, we, we are a soul in the human body. And so a lot of times what happens is that, and this is for anyone, and it doesn't matter, you know, if, if you're sensitive, if you're not sensitive, it's really understanding uh, how the ego works and how that part of the brain works and being able to put it in its place so that you're able to see life in a different view and more in that, in that um, spiritually aligned view. And what is it about addictions? And I don't know the, if, <laughs> if, if you have had any struggle with that personally, but you said your parents did. What yes. is it about addictions that somehow open up some of these doors as well? And I don't mean necessarily in a good way, but somehow mm-hmm. it's involved. Yeah, well, you know, there's a few things with this. So, um, you know, we are vibration, we are energy, and um, so when, when someone struggles with an addiction, what it does is it, it lowers their their field. So just the same way if someone, you know, has a low immune system and they get sick, that's kind of the same thing. When, when someone's... Um, existing at that level, um, they're basically opening up Pandora's box to experience um, any type of, uh, of spirit activity, whether it be from the light or the dark. Um, and so what I find actually, and thank, thank God I have not had that, that issue, um, I, I feel like it skipped a generation, or I think just from what I experienced, it just has this, this bad taste in my mouth. But um, what I can say about that is that People that usually are highly sensitive or even empathic or psychic or they have this ability, a lot of times they are trying to numb their feelings. So they go for, you know, the bottle or they go for whatever's outside of themselves to, to numb them because they, they literally can't take, as they'll put it, the, the weight of the world on them. And what they're really experiencing is that they haven't quite learned how to have that energetic boundary with others and mm-hmm. also with the other side. Okay, I've got so to, I'm sorry, there's... sorry, Bill, just got to cut you off there because we have to go to a hard break here, but we'll pick it up when we come back. Please support the program. Go to patreon.com slash Joha. That's J-O-H-A-W. Our guest tonight, Bill Phillips, Psychic Medium. His website is his name, BillPhillips.com. Phillips is spelled, by the way, with one L and two Ps at the end. His book is called Signs from the Other Side, and that's what we're talking about tonight. And uh, Bill, you know, going back to your childhood as well, one of the things that I read when I was uh, reading more information about you is that you had a fascination with death as a child. Do you still believe that's what it was, a fascination? Um, you know, I think as a as a child, um, that fascination was again more of that more of that curiosity, but but definitely more of my soul gravitating towards what was my truth in this lifetime. And. You know, you mentioned your parents um, having addiction issues. We talked a little bit about that. But did they have, either of your parents, have any of these sensitivities that you were aware of? Um, not that, not that, I, that they have expressed to me. I, I, I do know that on my um, dad's side of the family that um, there have been several people known to have experienced the same type of, uh, of sensitivities. So I, I, I'm pretty sure I get it from my dad's side of the family. So um, let's talk about the book a little bit. Um, sure. Tell us about it. It's called Signs from the Other Side. What made you decide to write it? You know, so this was basically, you know, I had wrote my first book, which um, was about my experience um, of basically self-discovery, my, my life story, how I, how I really um, came to own this, this gift. And the second book was really sort of taking it a little bit further, um, really truly just to show people that, you know, they're not alone in this and that I, I firmly believe that we all, we all connect through, through stories, in, you know, in general in life. And so what not of a better way than to read something and, and have this aha moment, you know. So I really wanted to empower people through my story and through the stories that, um, that I put together in, in this book to show people, you know, hey, I, I've also had that experience, so maybe I'm not so crazy after all. And um, so that really was the intention behind it, was for anyone to pick it up and to 
be able to resonate with it in a way that would allow them to um, make their own connections, uh, you know, build their own language, basically, with the other side, and to basically take away any rules, you know, or any fear or any stigma from it so that people know that it's really pretty simple. It just basically is asking and receiving. It's just giving permission to ourselves and to them to make that connection. One of the things I think it's important to make a distinction of right now, because we've kind of, um, we've talked about uh, some of these terms and it's important to understand the difference, but uh, some people consider themselves psychic. Some people consider themselves, consider themselves a medium. Some consider mm-hmm. themselves both. What's the difference between the two? It's also a great question, and there there's so many different um, labels, especially nowadays. So a psychic um, or intuitive, rather, is someone who's able to to tune into the energy of the living, whether it be the past, present, future, really pick up on on things in which would be potentially for the future. Um, that's a psychic, and a medium is someone who's able to take that a little bit further and use those psychic senses to channel the energies from the other side. Um, so a lot of times, you know, when I'm working with people or if I'm doing uh, like an audience event, I, I explain that I simply call myself a channel between here and there. And another thing that's important to understand, and I'm hoping that your experience with communicating uh, with the other side will give you more insight than what any of us have on mm-hmm. this particular question. But And this is, this is one of the hardest ones to ask and harder to answer. What is death? <laughs> Um, great question. Death is simply, is simply just change. You know, I, I don't, you know, I don't even like to use the word death because it has a negative connotation to it. It's, it's, it's truly just change. And so basically what's happening is that we're, we're leaving behind the body of armor that we have, um, you know, decided to come into and to experience life in the physical form. And when we, when we leave it, you know, we go through and we see, you know, we see life the way that our soul was always trying to put it there in front of us, you know, all about love and all about the relationships and all about sort of creating that version of heaven while, while we're here. So we, we do go through this sort of like review process, um, and, and we, we connect with people that are part of our soul group and those that maybe we, we experience when we were here in the physical world. We, we do experience that connection when we leave the body. And so it's basically just going from, from one room into the other. It, it, it really is that simple. I, and I, we hear this more and more um, mm-hmm. from guests like you. That it's a transition, it, and it's not something to fear. And and those who have had the right experiences say emphatically that when you, quote-unquote, die, it's not the end. It's really just a beginning of sorts. But why is it, with all that information, many of us still fear death? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's because um, we were also designed in a way to have this survival mechanism put into us. And that that fear and that, that ego part of us, the, the part of us that's able to go, okay, that's fire, don't touch it, you'll get burned. You know, it's that same type of sensation that warns you when, um, when danger is near. And so it's interesting because they are very, very strongly connected. Um, and so I, I feel like the reason why there's so much fear about it is, is also because, you know, it's on some level, it's the unknown on some level, but also it's because of, of the, the fear of, of not knowing how to exist in this capacity, you know, or um, what's familiar to us. Because what, when you do lose the physical body, you know, it's like kind of being born again. It's like you have to learn how to, 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 to be back in that energy form. And, and how, how do you live in that energy form? How do you communicate in the energy form? There is a shift of awareness with it. But, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful shift. It's, it's a beautiful awakening. But, of course, as long as we are in a human body, fear will always exist. It's, it's part of the part of what we've signed up for being here and and if we use it correctly if we use it for what it's meant for then you know we can live a much more um happier existence but if we let that control everything it's not always the happiest we um we've been talking about communication and when we talk about communicating 
communicating with those that have departed. What form does that communication come in? And I know there's a real range of things. We have people that talk about dreams. We have people that talk about, um, you know, a song comes on the radio that's at the right time. Uh, are those the types of communications we are we talking about? And are there more than that? Is there more than that? It, it, it's really infinite. The the um, possibilities with it are infinite. And, um, you know, I, I have about 20 or so stories in this book, but, I mean, there were so many other stories, and it really just depends on the connection to the the um, individual person. So, um, you know, if, if somebody was really into sports, let's just say, and their father passed away and they shared that commonality, it's pretty, it's pretty possible that that father is then going to send a sign that would correlate with what connected them in the first place. Um, but there, there's so many different types of ways in which they do communicate with us, and they're they're using our senses. They're they're using what's in our reference. So, a lot of times, um, you know, we hear about lights going out. We hear about the you know the music stopping or coming on at at the perfect time. Um, honestly, the list goes on, and I, I can tell you personally through my experiences um, with spirit and with my mom particularly is um, she sends me a few different things. And a few of them I go, I go into in the book, but um, she likes to use numbers quite a bit to get my attention. And so back in the 90s, you know, we had pagers, in, um, and I had a pager for a brief time. And I remember um, she, would, she would page me 143143, uh, 143, which was our code for I love you. And I I cannot tell you how often I see it, whether it be on receipts or even the back of cars, license plates. I mean, there's so many possibilities. Um, They basically use anything that will get our attention, and I find that they use people um, uh, subconsciously to make that connection. So let's just say, you know, you're on the freeway and you're driving home. Now, how how often do you recall, you know, going from point A to point B? Not not very often. You probably get home and you're like, wow, I was right. locked in my head that whole time. <laughs> right. I'm surprised I even made it home. So um, a lot of times, you know, someone else will be guided to make that, you know, left-hand turn or decide to go right instead and end up in front of you. And, you know, it happens to be your grandmother, Ellen, that passed away five years ago. It, it, just, it, it just really depends um, on how they want to orchestrate it. And um, from, from my experience and from what I've also um, relayed to other people as well through readings and just, um, just friends, et cetera, is that a lot of it's um, – a lot of it has to do with how it would connect to them individually. I've lost, I've lost both of my parents within the last um, five years, and mm-hmm. um, I've been hoping, I've been waiting, um, I've been looking for some kind of direct communication um, from them. Sometimes I think I've gotten something, but uh, mm-hmm. not always. It's not always definitive enough that I can can be sure of that. And if 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 they're anxious to communicate with me or anybody who has departed anxious to communicate with a loved one who's still living. Um, why don't they just take the easiest route and just show up in front of me? <laughs> I mean, that would get my attention, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of times they, they are doing that, especially in the dream state, you know, when, when we're most receptive to them. But so much of the time, though, you know, we have so many things going through our minds that we're not, we're not consciously recalling that in our waking, in our waking space. Um, and also, you know, there are times, there, there's different levels of spirit as well, and that's something to really also um, understand is that people hear of the word ghost, you know, and, and it has a connotation to it of something spooky or something that's not at peace. And, and th- there, is, there is truth to that, you know. There's different levels. And so an, an earthbound spirit or a ghost Someone who's more who's more heavy to the earth plane, you know, they 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 haven't really accepted what what's going on. They're they're in a state of flux, you know, um, and there's a lot of denial on their end. So it's very common actually for um, someone with the naked eye to see that type of apparition more so than a spirit who's in a higher place of frequency, even though they are around us, because they're vibrating so high, our physical senses, our, our, our physical um, eyes 
don't always pick up on that. And that's the reason why they use other signs to get our attention. Um, and, you know, I've, I've met with many people like yourself that have an inkling of something, but they're not entirely sure if, if that's what it is. And what I always encourage them to do is give them some ground rules. You know, I always like to say, show it to me in threes. And the the reason for that is because it it, it does sort of um, quell any kind of skepticism or that left brain um, to know that you're receiving it more than once. I mean, you know, if the light bulb goes out once, it's very possible that something else caused that. But if it happens more often and you notice that it happens, let's just say, when you're thinking of your mom, you know, or um, on a significant date, let's just say, that's being orchestrated by that particular particular soul to give you that reassurance. And so it definitely requires us to go into that vulnerable place, that that place that most people don't want to go to, to make that connection. Because keep in mind, we are we are soul to soul communicating, not body to soul. And I think that's where people get a little bit frustrated is that they expect, like you said, someone to just appear and go, hey, I'm here, you know. And um, I, I, I wish it was that easy. I feel like if that was the case, you know, there wouldn't be as much fear about it. But if you think about it in the terms of energy and, and our, our truest and purest form, it's really just getting back into that focus and getting into that, um, that relationship with your own soul, with your own energy, to then be able to understand how they operate. Website is his name, BillPhillips.com. Phillips is spelled with one L, two P's at the end, and his book is called Signs from the Other Side. And we're talking about communicating with folks on the other side, people we have lost, loved ones, friends, um, something that uh, that we all go through at some point in our lives as we lose someone that's very special to us. But what we're learning tonight is that we're not necessarily losing them. We just have to think of the whole process in a different way. And Bill is walking us through that. Um, Bill, why is it important? And this just, just to warn you here, this is a short segment, but why is it important for us to be able to communicate with those we have lost? That is also a great question. The reason why it's important is to understand that Our time here is fleeting. It's very short. And where they are at, that's that is where we go. That is eternity. That that is that that's heaven basically. So for more than one reason, it's it's establishing and maintaining that that connection, that bond of love that definitely connects each and every one of us on this planet. Um, But also it's to have them help us navigate our lives as well. And a lot of times what happens is that um, they're able to help us in ways that they could not help us when they were here. They're able, they're able to, like, give us, you know, gentle guidance. They're able to open doors for us. They're, they're, they're able to orchestrate things in our lives um, to help us see life through that view, through that viewpoint, through that spiritual viewpoint, that, we're, that we are indeed connected, that there's no separation between us. That's truly the reason why. And um, on the human level, it's to also give us that reassurance and that faith that this is not the end. Can, let me back up. Is it more important for us to be able to commun- communicate the other, to the other side, or is it more important for those on the other side to be able to communicate with us? I believe it's equally as important. It, it is a dual process, and a lot of, you know, we're, we're meeting them halfway, they're, they're meeting us halfway. So I, I believe that it's, it, it, it serves both sides of the equation. All right, we're talking with Bill Phillips, and I will be taking your phone calls in the next hour. We're not doing readings tonight, but if you have questions about this topic or Bill's work or his book, uh, please feel free to call at 844-687-7669. We'll open up the phone lines during the top of the hour break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Bill. Um, I'll also remind you, we've got some great guests coming up uh, in the next few nights. Of course, tomorrow night will be a best of program. Monday, we've got a guest shuffle going on. I'll let you know. (laughs) I guess 
course, not until Monday, who we've got coming on Monday night. Tuesday, however, Raymond Shemansky will be with us. He'll talk about his quest for the truth about extraterrestrial visitation from the perspective of a former senior scientist for the government. That's somebody in the know, somebody who has seen and heard and felt and experienced all of this firsthand. Raymond will be with us on Tuesday night. Wednesday night, we have a couple of guests, one of which will be Lee Austin. Lee is a flat earth theorist, and he has some new ideas and new theories regarding that discussion, and he'll present them to us Wednesday night right here on Beyond Reality Radio. Hey, it's JV here. You know I've asked for your support in the past, and I'm going to do it again because it's really, really important. And there are a couple of ways you can support the show, and it's so inexpensive. Now, you can go to Patreon, and you can become a Patreon supporter, and we really, really encourage that. But there's also another way. If you look at the description of the podcast, if you're a podcast listener, and you scroll down to the bottom, there's a way to support the show directly through the podcast app. And it's only 99 cents a month. It's less than a buck. You probably have that change in your couch right now. That dollar a month, less than a dollar, goes a long way in helping us produce this program, provide great interviews for you during the course of the week. I thank you in advance because the support is so important to the program. Uh, Thank you for being here. Thank you to all the radio stations carrying the program around the country. Thank you to the folks who download the program, which is quite a robust number of people who find uh, that this is great conversation to listen to uh, when they go to work in the morning or, or something. I'm not sure exactly when they're downloading. I know a lot of people do say they they use the show as uh, something to pass the time for their commute. We appreciate that. Uh, if No matter what source you get the show from, if you would just, uh, if you have an opportunity, rate it, comment on it, like it, whatever you need to do, maybe even share it with some friends. Spread the word. We uh, we appreciate that as well. Uh, we've got a great show underway. We're talking with Bill Phillips tonight. Bill is a psychic medium, and we're talking about his book called Signs from the Other Side. We're going to continue that conversation in just a few moments uh, i w- did want to bring up scaricon i haven't mentioned that yet tonight uh it's a great event coming up june 7th through the 9th in framingham massachusetts that's right outside of boston and this event is a fan convention it's good for families kids adults whatever it happens to be anybody who likes horror or sci-fi or paranormal entertainment whether it's television or movies Uh, We have celebrities from all of those genres. Uh, There are panel discussions. There are parties. There are terrific vendors. It is a hotel conference center full of this stuff, including if you have seen the movie Terrifier. And I know people in the horror community are very, very excited about that movie, uh, movie Terrifier. It uh, debuted on Netflix last year sometime. Um, But the villain in that film is a clown. His name is Art the Clown. And the actor who plays Art the Clown will be at Scaricon. He will be doing a full makeup photo op for fans. That's a really unique and rare opportunity. The director of of uh, Terrifier and the writer, who is the same guy, will be there as well, Damian Leone. The actor who plays Art the Clown, David Howard Thornton, will be there. Plus, we've got Billy Zane. He's from Titanic and a bunch of other stuff. He's got uh, the Phantom and, and Tales from the Crypt connections for horror and sci-fi. Heather Langenkamp from um, the Nightmare of El- on Elm Street films. Cassandra Peterson, you know her as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. All those folks and many, many others will be there. Plus a 40th anniversary cast reunion of the movie Phantasm. Remember that one? from I think it was night, well, 40th anniversary. It had to be 1979, right? Uh, great film, campy uh, cult classic Phantasm. Five cast members and the director will be there at Scaricon. Check out all of the information at Scaricon.com. It's a terrific event. Let's bring our guest, Bill Phillips, back into the program. Bill, when you set out to write this book, um, you must have had uh, what would be volumes of of experiences, whether they were yours or shared with you by other people, of folks who have made the leap or or crossed the bridge and been able to communicate with the other side. How do you begin to sort through those stories and decide which of those are going to influence this book as you're writing it? Yeah, that was a very challenging process, and uh, uh, a lot of incredible stories, um, you know, just didn't make the cut because you know you only have so much, so much space. Um, so it was really going through and um, as a consensus, really, really feeling with what I felt would connect with with the reader, you know, and they're they're stories that um, may may be common, may not be so common. Um, there's actually one incredible story that's one of my favorites actually in the book um, about a uh, a man who lost his wife uh, in her mid-30s and they had a daughter together. 
I mean Brianna, and um, he had he was um, he had sold his house a few months um, after she had passed, and he was wanting reassurance that you know he was making the right decision, and uh, he goes into the, into the house that he's about to purchase, and it's being constructed still, and um, on the uh, wall there's a swatch that has a, the the color of the paint that they're going to be using in that particular house, and the the color was named Heather, and that was his wife that passed away. Oh, wow. So that's another example of how she knew the best way in that situation to give him that reassurance and that validation that she was in approval of this, and, and she actually was behind the, the scenes helping him with this. So there, there are so many incredible stories, but that's just one of them. Now, your book is uh, offers some of those experiences and um, relates some uh, stories like that. But in addition to that, it also offers guidance to folks who are trying to figure out how to communicate themselves, right? Absolutely, yeah. I definitely go through that process, um, and I, I go through, um, you know, just the different clairs, the chakras. I go through meditations as well, and and just through my uh, a brief synopsis of my of my experience growing up to sort of help give them a reference for how it worked for me, and hopefully to inspire them to delve deeper into that. Can. Everyone who's passed over be contacted, or can only certain people be contacted? Is, is, there, is there a time period by which somebody makes a transition and they're no longer reachable by us? You know, um, again, there's no rules to that, but what they have expressed through me is that they want to they wanna be around where they're at and, and watching their families grow and evolve. So, so typically what I feel happens is that it's generationally speaking that they um, come back together and sort of reassign roles uh, in the physical. So, But I've also um, had experiences where someone lost a baby, you know, and that child as well came back very shortly afterwards. So there, there's no particular rules to that, but typically I would say about 80 to 100 years of, of of human years, that is. is are, in your conversations or communications with folks on the other side, what do you hear about what they are doing, what, how they are uh, existing? Do you get any real information about what the F afterlife is about? Uh, all the time. And, and really what it is is they are, um, they are creating the life that they so wanted to experience, you know, when they were here in the physical. So, um, you know, if, if someone loved to play golf and that was their pastime, they're, they're going to, they're going to, um, you know, etch that into their, into their existence over there. Um, and also on that same note, if somebody did, let's just say, pass through a, a suicide or a, an overdose or through addiction, they may feel that part of their, their, their karmic um, debt is to uh, be a guiding light for someone who's here. So a lot of times I, I see both sides of the coin where they're helping the living make these decisions, but at the same time, they're, they're still living this expression of love where they're at and this expression of just being, being in the moment and, and living in that space, living in that frequency. So um, it, it really does go both ways. We are taking your questions if you have any for Bill. We're not doing readings tonight, but the phone number is 844-687-7669. If somebody did want to get a read in, reading with you, Bill, how would they go about that? Um, they would go on my website. It's uh, my name, BillPhillips.com, and they, they should be aware that it's about a two-year wait list. Two-year wait list, Bill? Yes. Wow. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, so they got to be prepared to, uh, to wait some time. Now, do you do those readings uh, by phone, by Skype, in person, or all of the above? Yeah, I have an office in um, Southern California, and I do them, you know, through Skype, through phone, and I also um, travel the country as well, doing different types of audience events or workshops. Do you um, see any barriers to these communications? In other words, um, is there anything that can prohibit somebody from being able to make contact? Um, fear and doubt. Doubt is probably the number one element in that equation. Is is just not 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 having a belief in it. So that, that's why I, I say actually in this book that you have to give your beliefs to it. You have to 
definitely, you know, open your mind to it and, and make that your reality. So I always see that, you know, someone's just on the, on the brink of having that aha moment and then the rational mind kicks in and kind of <laughs> destroys that evidence that, that spirit's been trying to deliver to them. So that's, that's one way. Um, but also sometimes as well, grief as well, you know, grief is, is, is very heavy at times. And so what it does is it pulls our, it pulls our energy down. It pulls our vibration down. And when we're in that space, it's a little bit more difficult to see what's going on around us. When somebody attempts to make a, a contact or communication themselves, let's say in the most simplest form, how do you recommend they do that? Simplest form, I, I would say, and even mentally, you don't ask, you don't have to verbalize it. You have to just put your your feelings behind this request. Just ask them for the sign. Ask, the, give them permission. Give them permission to give you the sign in any way, shape, or form that you will best receive it. We're talking with Bill Phillips. He's a psychic medium. He's got a new book out. It's called Signs from the Other Side. And there's a subheading to that book, Bill, right? Yes, opening to the spirit world. So when we talk about the spirit world, is that mm -hmm. in a religious context at all? I mean, when what we've learned through what uh, in most major religions teach us, they teach us about an afterlife, they teach us about a heaven and spirits and angels. Uh, regardless of what the religion is, is that what we're talking about here? In some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. I, I feel like every religion has kind of a glimpse into this, um, but there's also some rules to it as well. So there's no rules to the spirit world. It's, it's, it, it is, in essence, heaven. It's the other side. It's, it's beyond the veil. You know, it's whatever you want to label it as. But um, I, I, I do believe that, that religion has its place in, in, in giving us some description about that. But I, I, I don't necessarily resonate with all the different types of rules that are put on it as well. All right, let's take a listener question now. Sure. Let's go to Rebecca in Florida. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome to the program. Hi. You have a question for Bill? I do. So as far as my mother, when before she had cancer, she knew she was going to die. Mm -hmm. And we used to joke around, and I said, Mom, you know, when you get to the other side, you know, let me know. Come back. Talk, talk to me. You know, haunt me, whatever. And she <laughs> laughed, and she said to me, she said, if I can, I will. Well, you know, I miss my mom a lot, and um, I think about her, you know, I, 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 I cry for her, and I, I ask for her to talk to me, and it's been 10 years, and there's nothing. And mm -hmm. when she passed, it was kind of like, I think she went before she actually physically went. She went, her soul was gone because, you know, she was in the hospice and all that. And it took her a long time physically for her organs and whatnot, her body, to go away, but... I feel like her soul and whatnot had already kind of gone. Does that affect the ability for them to, I don't know, when they depart and for them to come back and, you know, um, have any kind of communication? Does that, does that have any kind of effect, the, the way that they pass? That's a great question. And um, to answer that for you, um, a lot of times what they will tell me and bring through is that they are out of the body before they're pronounced physically dead. You know, they've already made that transition. So, um, that's, that there's good news in that, in, in, in the fact that they're not physically suffering, you know, they're, they're detached from that physical, um, a sense of that pain. Um, but I, I don't believe that it actually affects them coming back and being able to give you those signs, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I would encourage you just to maybe even get like a notebook or something and just start to write down, like ha honestly, have a conversation in your mind with her and just write down the impressions that come to you, write down the thoughts that come to you. It's, it's probably going to be something a little bit more subtle than what you're expecting. And that's, that's mm -hmm. the whole um, key to what I have done with writing this book is being able to explain to surrender your expectations with it. Surrender your expectations. And even though I, I'm not giving readings tonight, I just want to say this to you because I just saw it very clearly. I want you to write down ladybugs. What? I want you to write down ladybugs. Okay. 
Okay, that to see see if you see if you notice anything about that <laughs> um, over so, the next couple of weeks. Rebecca, thank you for the call. Sometimes, thank you. yeah, sometimes Bill, these these messages come through and they don't always click right away. And oh, it, absolutely. Right. I mean, sometimes, and then uh, we've had people call back a month later and who, who who have received a reading on the program by somebody. They call back and say, "Well, you know, when you said that, it made no sense to me." And then yesterday, this happened, and it all became perfectly <laughs> clear. Right. Yeah, that was my first book, Expect the Unexpected, all about the uh, different client uh, stories about how that validation was like a three-month process, you know, and how, how revealing it was. So that's also important to keep in mind is that, you know, where they exist, they don't have time and space like we do here. You know, time is man-made right. in the sense that we have calendars and clocks. So a lot of times they bring through information, and it has a way of sort of um, – Ra- unraveling and sort of connecting when we need it the most. Phone number 844-687-7669. If you want to join our discussion with Bill Phillips, he's a psychic comedian. His website is billphillips.com. Phillips is spelled with one L and two P's at the end. Uh, and his book is called Signs from the Other Side. Bill, this is a short segment again here. But um, I know a lot of people who, and whether it's professionally through this program or just friends and family, who have had some kind of experience with communicating with somebody from the other side. And I told you that my parents passed away. I had an experience when my mom passed, you know, seconds after she passed, I felt her brush my cheek as in a breeze that should not have been there. Um, So I know it happens as well. But why is it we all have these experiences, yet it's still so difficult for some people to believe? Yeah, and I, I really believe that it, it all goes back to that ego and, and really just, you know, the ego is a stubborn thing and um, and it has the ability to really bypass, um, you know, our, our intuitive self and just block us out from having that experience. So I, I really feel that it, it's fear. It's, it's fear that, that definitely creates that dialogue within themselves um, to resist themselves from receiving that type of, of communication. So it, it all goes back to fear. We are going to continue our conversation on the other side of the break. In the meantime, um, where can people get the book, Bill? They can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and I believe most, uh, most booksellers. Tomorrow night, um, we have a best of for you. And then, of course, it's the weekend, and I uh, hope everybody has a great weekend planned. I will be at a fundraiser in Oneonta, New York, it is uh, uh, called G Fest, and it's a fundraiser for a music scholarship in the name of my father, Gary Johnson. And if you're anywhere in the area, I'd love to have you show up. It starts at six o'clock Saturday night at the B Side Ballroom and Supper Club in Oneonta. That is a fancy name for a really cool restaurant bar. And there's like six bands playing, a lot of great people, including uh, your call screener, Orion. His band will be playing, and I'll be in a few of the bands as well, um, plus some others. And it's going to be a great time. If you uh, aren't in the area and you still like more information about this, and there's going to be a donate button on Facebook at some point, maybe tomorrow, just go to Facebook and go to uh, Gary Johnson Memorial Scholarship. You'll find it there and can get more information. Tonight we're talking with Bill Phillips. We're talking about... His book, among other things, the book is called Signs from the Other Side. And, Bill, one of the things that you say is that your life's mission is to help people deal with the grief of losing loved ones by bringing them through. Um, how important is that to you? It sounds like it's pretty important. Oh, it's it's extremely important. It's it's my purpose for, for being here, you know. And, it, and it honestly, it was something that... I never even thought in a million years would become my reality, but um, they were very persistent, you know, with this. And so I, I had to listen to them and trust them, and it's, it's in my heart. That's, I know that it's part of why I'm here. So. And you talk about a few things that uh, you, you kind of, uh, I guess, quantify uh, some of the things that you help with, like validations, uh, evidential information. What, is, what does that mean specifically? Yeah, so basically it's um, giving some kind of tangible proof um, that shows whoever I'm working with, so the living, that there is this connection being made. And so a lot of times that happens through when someone comes through. I mean, there's there's so many different types of things that they could say. You know, it, it could be their sign. It could be the message that they heard their loved one tell them before they passed. It's anything that is going to give them that reaction on the heart level um, so that they have that reassurance knowing that they are with them. 
As the book goes through some of these experiences that you share from other people and yourself, um, are they are there is there any ever a point where some of them actually end up being uh, a source of more grief, or are they all healing? Um, you know, within my experience, I, I've only seen it bring positive results and uh, and bring this awareness, um, and that's because you know. Having that that um, open mindset and that open heart, that actually shifts us out of that grief space, so that we're able to make that connection. So, part of part of my job as the as the medium is to be able to give who I'm working with that that awareness and that understanding, which kind of like giving them their own tools for their toolbox to be able to take with them afterwards to use when they do feel that grief come in. Can you share another one of those stories with us? Yeah, so another story that really um, is amazing to me, and, you know, my my background was in music, actually, classical music. I have a degree in it. Um, So music's always been very, very relevant with with me and with how spirit likes to communicate. But there is one story in there where um, someone lost a very dear um, uncle or great uncle to him, and uh, the same day, he was um, he was wrapping up a bowling game, and the game like was delayed by like an over an hour. And when he got to his car on a top forty station, there was a song "Country Roads Take Me Home," and that was his uncle's song to him. It, mm-hmm. it, it it always connected them when they were here, and the fact that everything happened around him externally to delay him from getting to his car until an hour later and, and hearing that song on a station that never plays that type of music is incredible, you know? So that's, that's another story. And there's, there's, there's so many like that, but everyone who's, you know, even listening tonight, they have their own experiences. They've had their own stories. And so I really just want to empower them to verbalize it and not to be afraid to speak your truth in that matter. And, and to know that in doing so, it's a ripple effect, you know, and you will attract people that have had similar experiences. And, and that's, that's another reason why I wrote the book was to really bring that awareness, but also to empower anyone out there to know that what they're experiencing is true and real. I, if you don't mind, I'd like to share a quick story. My sister told me um, shortly after my father passed away, uh, yeah. she said she had a dream. And in the dream, my father was telling her, giving her the number, thir- I think it was 13. It may have been a different number, but we'll say it was 13. And she had no idea what it meant. And uh, that morning, she was uh, getting ready for her boys to go to school. And she was flipping through the television, and she got to that channel, 13. And when she hit that channel, um, uh, a, a commercial came on that was, was a commercial that my father and she used to laugh about all the time. Mm-hmm. And she cites that often as my father communicating to her just to let her know he was okay. Absolutely, a hundred percent, and I, I love that. And see that that took her being aware. I mean, she she could have shrugged that off as this being, ah, oh, that's that's ridiculous, you know. But she something within her kept her awareness with that, and and that's that's the connection that I'm referring to. It's it's that energetic connection, and um, when you give it energy, trust me, the signs appear all over the place. So I, I love that story. Do you think everybody has some of these abilities? within them and it's just a question of uh, finding how to finding a way to access them or maybe cultivating them yes I do and I, I feel like you know we were all designed to really be this way to, to really communicate energetically like that and then society happened and this whole world happened and you know that was kind of thrown out the window so um, but we are getting back to a place now where it's becoming more relevant and we're, we're actually needing to rely more on the on our senses to make those connections. So I I definitely do, and I feel like with anything, you know, in life, there's varying levels of um, understanding or, 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 or degree of talent with that as well, you know, just like with music, someone can be Jimi Hendrix and someone can maybe play an A minor chord, but it doesn't mean that they're meant for that. So um, I I really believe that um, there's a lot of different factors that really go into it. Um, And uh, in this situation, it's also just knowing that it's that it's in you, you know, just like with with anything that we pursue, it's, it's a part of us. But 
regardless if someone wants to pursue this on, on a large level or just for themselves, we all have the capability of making that connection. You um, suggest in the book that instead of saying, I need to see it to believe it, which is a common phrase or saying that people use, you say you should adjust it to, I need to believe it to see it. What's that mean? Yeah, so that that means basically, um, you know, we are the creators of our reality. And whatever we put our focus on or whatever we give our beliefs to really does manifest into the world around us, you know, in so many ways. So that that particular passage just means give your beliefs to something larger than yourself. Give your beliefs to the possibility of, of, of this being true and real, and let that be your guiding light. Let that be your anchor. You know, in, in doing so, we're actually shifting, shifting the awareness by giving our beliefs to that. And in doing that, we're actually pulling ourselves out of that rational way of thinking into the intuitive part of ourselves that very easily can recognize those communications. Are there things that we can practice during our daily routine that might not be specifically designed to make contact but would have the same effect or maybe just open things up a little bit more for us? Yeah, so I, I always suggest, like, spiritual protection. You know, when you get up in the morning, see yourself surrounded in that white light, um, the light of God. That, that just in itself anchors you, and it kind of lights up the chakras and lights up the energy of the etheric body. But also, really, be, really try to think, you know, um, and, and have this dialogue in your mind. So let's say, you know, you're going to work, and you want to play around with your own abilities. You know, maybe just in your mind ask, you know, okay, when I go to work today, who am I going to see first? Is it going to be male or female? Okay, what color are they going to be wearing? Okay, you know, try to play around with that energy because when you do that, and again, you give your, your beliefs to something larger, um, you definitely build that dialogue. So it, it really goes down to building the dialogue, building the awareness. And the only way to do that is to be able to understand how your mind works and what, and what resonates with you on that, on that deep soul level. One of the things I don't like talking about much, but I think it's important to mention because a lot of people listening will contact a medium and, and look for some kind of guidance and help um, for the, with this. Uh, and not all of those people are going to be legitimate or on the up and up. Do you have a suggestion as to how people can kind of filter, maybe get a, a sense whether somebody who's asking for their hard-earned money is mm -hmm. legitimate in what they're doing? That's a great uh, res response, and I and I actually thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, you know, I typically say go with someone who has had the experience already. You know, I'm I'm very grateful within myself that a lot of people that come to me is is through word of mouth, actually. So that that is a big um, deal. Um, but also, you know, use your use your intellect and use your, use your intuition. If if nothing it has any kind of connection leave you know that that's the whole point of it is to have that validation and to have that um that comfort but if and also i will say this too because it actually happened to me years ago if someone says to you you know you have this dark cloud over your head or you know i can help you i can help you be happy i can help lift this off of you that's also a very red, big red flag to get the heck out of there you know and unfortunately that does exist in this world um, but 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 truly going with word of mouth using your own intuition and knowing how to decipher um, you know, the facts from the non-facts. Because if you're going to a legitimate person and channel, medium, psychic, um, the evidence should be pretty irrefutable. You mentioned uh, a dark cloud. Um, we've had people on the program that have talked about uh, going to some kind of reading and whoever they're getting the reading from says you have a negative entity attached to you. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about in the sense yeah. of a dark cloud? Yeah, and then that, they, and that's then they, how they kind of... they ask for more money. Those people yeah. kind of hook you in. Yeah, they ask for another for another hundred bucks. They can do this and keep coming back for the next three weeks and we'll get this thing unattached or whatever. Um, yeah. So does that happen at all? Or are, are you saying that that's not something that has any basis in legitimacy at all? 
I or... mean, I I don't know how it could. I mean, when 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 you're going to someone for that type of service, there's usually not like add-ons for things like that. You know, <laughs> right. not not in, in my situation, anyways. Um, and, and and typically, you know, a reading is not fear-based. It's it's being able to give you the power, to give you the tools to be that person for yourself. So you're not so you're not giving your power away. And that that's really does that's really what happens in a legitimate reading is that you are given the tools and you are given that glimpse of power and hope to navigate through your life in a different way. Um, and I think that when people really see that um, and they see that it's legitimate in that sense, it is empowering because it shows them that there's something outside of their, their physical self that actually is working behind the scenes. Bill, is Signs from the Other Side a good place to start your journey, uh, someone's journey uh, into this idea and this concept, or do you recommend they come with some knowledge? You know, I I feel like um, this is a good starting point because I, I designed it in a way that anyone from any walk of life can pick it up and be um, schooled up, uh, about in some ways, metaphysics, spirituality, you know, um, the other side, but in a very simple way. And that was my intention, was to make it simple for that reason, because sometimes terminologies and, and too much can also inhibit that process as well. So there's, there's many wonderful books out there, and even my, my first book, too, is a great resource. But this book in particular is a great thing to, to go to to anyone who's curious or, or, or who's thinking, you know, I have that curiosity within me. I, I had a hunch or I think I had this visitation. This will give them more validation. Uh, we're almost out of time here, but we've talked about the book a lot. We've talked about uh, how to communicate, why communicate. But when it all comes down to it, somebody buys the book, reads it. What do you hope they come away with? I, I really hope that on some level they're able to experience um, a release or, you know, just a release of fear, a release of anxiety, just, just a knowing that they're not alone. That, that's really my intention with it, and I've been very um, grateful and blessed to see um, so many loving messages that people said, you know, I, I cried tears of joy reading the story because it reminded me of my mom or, you know, it reminded me of my brother that passed away. So that really is the intention is connection. So my intention to anyone who reads this is to know that we're all connected. And Bill, once again, give your website uh, any other uh, information that you want to pass on, plus where people can find the book. Yes, um, my website is billphillips.com. It's with one L and two P, so it's P-H-I-L-I-P-P-S. I'm also on Facebook, Psychic Medium Bill Phillips, and um, they can get the book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, but probably more than likely Amazon. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Bill. Your schedule is obviously very, very hectic, and we appreciate your time. I am very grateful. I thank you so much for the opportunity. All right, we're going to take a break. When I come back, we'll wrap the show up for tonight. It's Beyond Reality Radio. I'm J.V. Johnson. Are you tired of the costly charges of embalming a loved one? Does the hassle of meeting with the mortician interfere with your play on the back nine? Have you ever thought there's got to be a cheaper way? Crap Poker Sense. Save money and do it on your own time with the Crapco Home Embalming Kit. Crapco Home Embalming Kit. The Crapco Home Embalming Kit consists of all the key instruments needed to start embalming at home today. The Hydro Aspirator. Nasal Aspirator. Cavity Chemical Injector. Operating Scissors. Super Drain Tube. Suture Needle Set. And more. The Crapco Home Embalming Kit. Don't let Aunt Ethel's passing make you pass up a trip to the mall. Why let Uncle Dave's stroke interfere with your backstroke? Use the Crapco Home Embalming Kit to start a small business for the wife. And what better way to show that lover you care than to embalm them yourself with the Crapco Home Embalming Kit. (laughs) Our goal at Crapco is to save you money. The Crapco Home Embalming Kit. It may not be right. It may not be ethical. Hell, it may not even be legal. But with the Crapco Home Embalming Kit, you'll save on the way to the grave. Crapco, helping out the living so you can afford to die. Crapco highly recommends that you clean all home embalming kit tools before using them for cooking. Thanks for helping in the garden, baby. Uh, No problem. Uh Uh-oh, I gotta go again. Again? Hey, Hey, wait a minute. Crapco presents. It's the Crapco Turtleizer. The Crapco Turtleizer. Make your duty do its duty with the Crapco 
Turtleizer. Turn regular household human waste into fertilizer for your lawn or garden. We all do it, so we may as well get some benefit from it. My tomato plant's never been more juicy. Thanks, Turtleizer. And finally, my cucumbers are bigger and firmer than ever. I can't thank you enough, Turtleizer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's 100% natural. And the Crabco Turtleizer works great with house plants too. Don't my begonias look beautiful? Yeah, I've never seen them flower like that before. But what's that smell? The Crabco Turtleizer comes with all the things you need to make your morning chore into a whole lot more. Like a hardy stain-resistant net. A supply of Turtleizer reusable storage bags. A copy of People magazine. And an ocean breeze air freshener. The Crabco Turtleizer. Use it as a school project. Have the neighbors over for a Turtleizer party. Bring it to Grandma's for the weekend. Use it near kill-fired ceramics. It's a big help when potty training. And don't forget those romantic dinners for two. Baby, this salad is really good. Yeah, I grew it myself with the Crabco Turtleizer. Thanks, Crabco. <laughs> Start a small business for the wife by selling your extra Turtleizer to the neighbors. What's the scoop with your poop? Don't flush all those goodies down the toilet. The Crabco Turtleizer. The Crabco Turtleizer is available for a special limited time price. And get this free bathroom decanter to store your Turtleizer materials. The Crabco Turtleizer may cause unpleasant odors and a rash. Get yours today. All right, that's going to do it for tonight, everybody. Thanks for being here. A great show. Loved having Bill Phillips as part of the program tonight, so um, hopefully we'll have him back at some point. Don't forget, tomorrow night is a best-of show here on Beyond Reality Radio. And then as we get into next week, of course, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up. We know that um, we have some scheduled shuffling going around from going on for Monday night's program. Tuesday night, uh, Raymond Shemansky will be with us to talk about his quest for the truth about extraterrestrial visitation. From the perspective of a former senior scientist for the government, if anybody knows, a former senior scientist for the government will know. And then Wednesday, we'll have a couple of guests, including Lee Austin. And Lee has been on the program before talking about flat earth theory, but he's got some new information and new ideas that may help uh, sway you one way or another when it comes to that discussion. All right. So once again, stop by the Facebook page, the website, and the YouTube channel if you haven't found it yet. YouTube is just JV Johnson. Love to have you subscribe. It's Beyond Reality Radio. Beyond Reality Paranormal is hosted by J.V. Johnson and produced by Orion Palmer and Slick Eddie Edwards. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please consider supporting the program either through your podcast platform, click on the link in the description, or on Patreon at Joha Productions. If you'd like to be a guest on Beyond Reality Paranormal or you have a recommendation for a guest, contact our producer, Slick Eddie Edwards. Eddie is spelled with a Y at slickeddieedwards at gmail.com.